Welcome to the Fire Church Podcast. Today we pray Holy Spirit will speak through this message and into your life right where you are. Hey church, let's stay standing. Can we give our King Jesus our shout of praise as we do to honour Him? We honour the one who deserves all the honour, all the praise and all the glory. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Well, I, I missed you this morning because I, I went to um, the Sanctuary Church in Lilydale and preached for our good friend Liam Swain, who we've known for about 16 years. We met in Bible College where uh, Jess and I met, and um, it, it, it was amazing to see his church. If you have family and friends that live in the eastern suburbs near Lilydale, please, if they're looking for a church, encourage them to go there. I, I don't know what, what, what I was going to expect. Uh, from the social media and whatnot, and from what I've heard, it, it sounded good. But then it was another thing to be in the room, and it felt like home. It, the, the hunger, the passion in worship, and the, the receptiveness in the preaching as well, uh, it, it's something quite glorious. So if you have family friends in the area, hello, shout out to Liam, Shenny, and your crew as well. Uh, I heard it went well this morning as well with Pastor Lee preaching the word, introducing the first topic, the culture of honor. And so I have the uh, joy to bring... Uh, my angle on it tonight as well as we, as we planned around this. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for tonight. We thank you, Lord, for your word. Let it go deep into our spirit, into our souls, and let us be transformed from glory to glory and strength to strength. And everyone said, amen, amen. So why honor? Honor. Have you ever thought about the word, the meaning, the definition? Let me just read something out and we're going to flow here. Honor at its core. Honor is the act of recognizing and esteeming the value and dignity in others, and it goes beyond mere politeness or decorum. Honor involves a profound recognition of worthiness, reflecting a heart posture that values others genuinely and deeply. This fundamental principle has far-reaching implications both personally and spiritually by honoring others individuals cultivate an environment of respect. Everyone say respect. Amen. Say humility. humility. Respect and humility, in which in turn fosters mutual growth and understanding. This dynamic is crucial for personal and spiritual growth. As one honors God and others, they open themselves up to a deeper and more meaningful relationship with the divine and those around them. Honor opens doors. Honor brings the favor, it attracts the, the provision of God, the favor of God, the favor of man. Honor opens so many doors where otherwise, honor, if it isn't there, it, it just remains dormant and closed. I, I, I've got many experiences in, in this area, but there's three areas we want to um, cover tonight around the subject of honor. And there, there could be so more. We, we could literally do maybe a seven-part series literally just on the word honor from the Bible, but one of the... Three areas we're going to cover tonight is honoring up, honoring down, and honoring around. And if you are here this morning, you know what's about to happen. So as a way to remember this message, let's get our bodies involved. Let's honor up. Let's stand up. Honor up. Yeah, hands up. Good work, Jess. Honor down. Sit down. You can bob down if you have room in your aisle. And then honor all around. Give, give, give us that Pentecostal twirl. One more time. Honor up. On a down, on a all around. Very good. Oh, I was going to jump. I was going to jump that stage again. Maybe I shouldn't. Too much factors involved tonight. Honoring up. Firstly, we, we need to honor God. Amen. We, we need to honor the Lord. And, and uh, I'm going to go through a little bit of that. And so let's look at this first. On uh, Hebrews 13, 17, Obey those who rule over you. Be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Now, I've been pastoring full-time for five years, and this is probably the first time I've ever read this verse out to our church. Um, it, it's just kind of, I get this funny thought and feeling that, I don't want to um, demand honor from you as people of God. I don't, I'm not begging or, or, or pleading for your honor. I've kind of avoided this and just let others kind of speak into this 
But this is something that I realize I, I'm doing a disservice if I actually don't cover this off with you. Because as a baby Christian, when I came across this verse, as it was taught to me, and the power behind honoring my leaders who God had appointed above me, and how much it has actually opened up the world in terms of God's calling, in terms of God's provision, in terms of God's favor, and seeing the tests being done in the seasons that we're in, are we willing to honor those above us, even if those above us are somewhat unfair, somewhat mistreating us, and we see this in Scripture. So hear me out. I'm, I'm not saying um, continue to, to cop it with abusive leaders. I know some, some of us may have had an experience with really bad leadership, with abusive leadership, with, with people who really just, just knew they can cross the line and in some ways maybe just for that season get away with it. I hope by now you've, you've learned we're not that. Our leadership is not that if there's any... A whiff of that, we're on top of it. We, we, we say, hey, what's with the attitude? What's with the attitude? Let's, let's bring it down. Let's simmer it down. Let's humble ourselves. But we want to be able to honor those who rule over us because they will give an account. We give an account for what we do. Let it be a joy, not a grief, not a burden, or that will be unprofitable to you. But the opposite is true. If you do honor those above you, and if it's a joy, not a burden, then actually it, it, it brings so much of God's goodness. Now let me just briefly touch on David. David who had to serve his king Saul. He only didn't just have to, but he, he did it with an open and wholehearted devotion to his king. Even when King Saul was trying to literally kim, kill his life. David was on the run from Saul. Well, you know the story, and perhaps if you don't. David would run from cave to cave, hiding from Saul's men. And when there was a chance for uh, David to, to slay the king that, that would uh, want to kill him, as, as the Lord put Saul and his men into a deep sleep, and you, you have the bloodthirsty brothers, Absalom and, and I think it was uh, Joab, and they, they said to King David, look, the Lord has made a way. Here's your chance now. Let, just say the word, and this spear will go through the... Th will be thrusted through his temple, and then all your problems will be over. And David says in response, let it not be so. Who am I? Let not the Lord's anointed be touched. Touch not the Lord's anointed, David says. Touch not the Lord's anointed. So he cuts off the hem of Saul's garment. Even then he feels terrible, but he says to Saul, when he comes out of the cave, and the men wake up, my father Saul, why are you pursuing me? Let it be known today that you are my father and I honor you. You know, God considered that as a test for David. God put Saul into this deep sleep and David, he did the right thing. He continued to honor. And as a result, we see that David didn't have to take vengeance in his own hands. The story goes that Saul was slain in battle. And even the messenger that, that told David out of a proud heart to say, hey, the guy who's been chasing your life now is completely dead. And there was almost this, this um, attitude of celebration. Hey, he's dead now. Let, let's get on with our life. David became so angry that he would have such an attitude. And he had that messenger kaput. David knew what it was like to honor those above us. Even if we're being mistreated, God is bringing out something in you. Now, I'm not saying keep continuing. David literally had to run for his life. Don't stay there. Don't keep copping it. But there's something to be said about not talking badly, not gossiping, not causing division. But then there's a the beautiful part of when we honor up. Let's go to the, I'll go to the next part. Um, when we honor, this is not even in, in, the, in the slides, but honoring the Lord, honoring those above us. You know, as spiritual sons and daughters, I, I pray that you would have your own spiritual fathers and mothers. And I learned this recently. I'm part of this Revival uh, Leaders Network. And the recent topic that we had with this bunch of American pastors as well is how to be great sons and daughters to our spiritual mothers and fathers. Rather than always expecting to receive, receive, give, give, give to me, give to me, give to me, receive, want to learn, want to learn, want to learn, want to learn. How about we actually flip the table and we start to serve those who are above us, start to encourage, start to give, start to give of our time and resources. And we see this 
Elisha carried a double portion because he, what did he do? With his master, Elijah, he honored him. He served him. He followed him to the very end. And there's something special and something to be said when we as sons and daughters can honor those above us, our mothers and fathers in the faith. And guess what? The Bible says also, honor your mother and your father that it may go well with you and that you may live long on the earth. Again, if you have grown up with maybe some pretty bad parents, some abusive parents, that there is a way to still honor. A great way to honor is to recognize that they brought you into this world. They did the best that they could. Maybe they, they weren't the best parents for some reason. Maybe in their upbringing they were abused. Maybe in the upbringing that there's something that happened uh, terribly to them or circumstances got the best of them, but we can still honor. Amen? Um, another form of honor, honoring up, is... This, Romans 13, 1 and 4, Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. By who? So the authorities that are over us, let's say the Vic Police, the Victorian government, yes, I know, I know, I know, I know. We've, we were in a, in a capital state, in a, in, a, in a dystopian state for a while. I'm having fun. That's not very honoring, and sorry, Lord. Where is it from? These are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God. And those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For he is God's minister to you for good. It's for your good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is God's minister and avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. He is an avenger, not Iron Man, Spider Man, or Thor. He is God's servant to administer authority, administer the rules in which God has ordained for us to be governed by. Now, there, there is a line that you, that you don't cross. That the moment the authorities would have you go against the word of God, then, then, I'm sorry, then, then you do have every right to cross that line. It was said of the early disciples that they were told not to preach the name of Jesus, but they said to the rulers and authorities of that day, I'm sorry, but we are to bear God over man. The moment that your government tells you you can't preach the name of Jesus, that's the moment that you say, sorry, here's the line, but I'm about to cross it. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say this out of wisdom, which local high school, uh, it's in law. You can't actually preach the Word of God. You can't uh, lead someone into the faith, uh, even pray for them. But we know there is an eternal home for every single person, and that's either heaven or hell. And a local high school, uh, just over 12 months ago, I found myself in this place, and the, the Spirit of God was just just beckoning within me to say, are you more concerned about the rules of this earth, this temporary living, or are you more concerned about this person's eternity? I said, I'm more concerned about her eternity. Then he said to me in my spirit, then preach the good news to her, even in this high school in June with rainbow flags everywhere. And this person was in that lifestyle. And you know what? She thanked us so much. She has been completely set free, delivered, walking with the Lord, set free from uh, suicide, set free from depression, anxiety, fear, set free from sexual promiscuity and living a holy, selfless life for Jesus. Come on. We must honour God above man. We must honour God above man. Now, if you are a bit of a fast and furious driver and you take your inspiration from Tokyo Drift and, and you copying fines left, right and centre, then you probably do deserve a fine. Amen. And uh, pray for me because I, I need discipline in that area. <laughs> but I heard of this story talking about the subject of honouring those in authority. I, I, I've, and I've tried this out. I'm waiting for a response. I'm just being completely vulnerable with you all. I, I've heard of this story. And, and this person apologized to those in authority. I'm so sorry. I've done the wrong thing. I know. I completely take this on. I, I've done the wrong thing. I, I, I did exceed the limit. It, it, it was by a little bit, but I can take complete ownership. The person on the receiving end 
of, of uh, you know, Fires Victoria read this was completely stunned and shocked that someone would actually write such words. Normally it's, are uh, you bleep, 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 or don't you know any better, blah, blah, blah. Because this person honoured above, the, the person on the receiving end from the governing authorities thought, you know what, this is actually quite good. Fine, waved. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Honour opens doors. Honour brings favour. Honour up. Honour down. Honour all around. There's so many ways we can honour up. Through encouragement, through gifts, through serving. The one thing I learned early on in my corporate life before uh, stepping into ministry is you never burn bridges. You never know who you end up working with. Be nice to everyone. You never know who God will raise up. You know, you'd, you'd hate to think that, oh, you know, I'm, I'm just going to... Uh, go about my business, only connect with those who've got connections, I'll only just rub shoulder with those who, who are going somewhere. That is completely dishonoring. God sees that heart. And, and you, you, you don't ever know who God will use. I, I remember taking on this principle because I learned the hard way. I, I would do everything for my clients and burn bridges at the head office side. And then before I know it, I'm in head office now and I have to work with these people. And I, I realize, I'm so sorry. Yes, that was me, but that's not me anymore. And then when, when we got um, called to come to Fire Church, I honoured our previous leaders. I said, thank you so much for all that you've done. One year later, we're, we're in a national conference for our movement, and our previous senior pastor from our last church had just been voted in as our state president for the Australian Christian Church of Victoria. I flicked him a text as soon as he came off stage and I said, hey, Pastor Matt, I honour you so much. You, you're a great leader. If there's anything you need, please let us know sent the text. And did you know that, again, honour opens doors, honour protects, honour brings favour. It was a year later that we were found in lockdowns. It was a year later that, and maybe two years later, that we were just doing things that, by the conviction of our hearts, to keep the church open and free. And in the background, yes, we had some churches sadly talking badly about us and, and slandering us. But in the background, guess who also had our backs? our state president, and he said, no, 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 these guys are the real deal. And, and they encouraged us in the background, and they said, we honor you, but uh, maybe you can go to prison first and, and uh, just open the doors for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> we have, uh, we, we love our, 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 uh, our movement and the team. So honor up, let's do, let's do it one more time. Maybe two more times, honor up, stand up. Come on, let's get it Sunday night, let's get our legs moving, oh, honor down. Honor all around. All right, we're going to go to honor down now. <laughs> honor down. Now, with the concept of honoring down, we're not looking down on anyone at this point. It's just recognizing that maybe we are in a position of favor where we can give assistance. We're in a position that maybe we're a few seasons ahead and maybe we can help lift others up. So it's not looking down on anyone. Remember, the definition of honor is giving the right value and worthiness and esteem to those around us. So we're never looking down on anyone, but the, for the purpose of, I don't know, alliteration, rhyming, it's just easy to remember, right? Honor up, honor down, honor around. It says this in Proverbs 14, 31. Whoever oppresses the poor shows contempt for their maker, but whoever is kind to the needy honors God. You know you can honor God by being kind to those in need. You know, it says this as well. It's not on the slides, but in, in Isaiah 58, it talks about how some people would fast and they'll end up in arguments and brawling and fighting. But it says this in Isaiah 58, verse 6. Is this not the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share the food with the hungry and provide the, the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe them and to not turn away from your own flesh and blood, then your light will break forth like the dawn. Then your light will break forth like the dawn when you look after those in need, when you feed the hungry, when you give shelter, when you give clothing to those. Um, you know, what I love, come, we're coming up to two years next month. I'm not sure if you realize, but we have a food bank just out these doors, the Common Shelf. And uh, anyone here part of the Common Shelf team, just give us a quick wave. Yeah, Terry, who else helps out? 
Yeah, we, we, we serve roughly how many again per week that come through the doors? I think it's about 45 people per week that come. Just see, just see, 45 families. On top of that, Glenn and Amber do a, with a, with a great team as well, food pickup runs from Aldi Supermarket. And, and this is great, like amazing food. It, it's maybe got one day of life um, left in, in the scotch fillet. Steaks, yes, steaks in the pork ribs, uh, in these great cuts of meat, fresh fruit and veggies. And, you know, this photo was taken when we did the very first Aldi run in November 2022. I saw Glenn and Amber out in the car park dropping off the, uh, the food for, because they also bring food for the common shelf here. And we're just reflecting. This is the very first time in a local primary school in Frankston North. There's three schools in the state of Victoria because of the state of um, the area and the families that, that are in need. There's only three schools in the state of Victoria that provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And so as we dropped off the food, we came back to pick up the crates and all of this food, the whole table was completely cleaned out. It's got to the point that we, we do food runs for five schools. And Glenn and Emma said, it's so popular, this service, that there's a waiting line, a ticketing system with raffle tickets as well, of 15 individuals, 15 to 20 individuals every week, waiting for the food to be delivered so they can collect it for their families. 15 in to 20 individuals that represent four or three others in the household, about 100 families per week in just one school. Multiply that by about five schools, that's about 500 odd people, plus the 45 families here, multiply that by about three individuals in that family. That's over 600, 650, 650 individuals that we get to impact in our local city by doing something so simple. So I, 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 I get a lot of feedback when, when people come into our space in worship in, in, in sensing the presence of God, in, in the praise and the worship and, and all the amazing things that the team does here at the front, behind the scenes. Yes, I've forgotten you guys in, in making uh, this team sound amazing here in the room, uh, online, the preaching here, the welcome team, the ushering team, the kids' church, the Intraganza kids' church, and, and, and all the other teams in between as well, the outreach and so forth as well. But then I wonder, and I just realized, could it be that because we're doing this as well, it's like living at Isaiah 58, that we would give food to those who are in need, and then your, our light will break forth like the dawn. I wonder if we didn't do any of that stuff, would, would, it be the, would the presence of God be as powerful in this house? So can I just, for a minute, can we just honor our team, Terry and Jennifer Rawlings, who may be watching online, comes in the morning as well. And all those involved, Cheryl, Glenn and Amber, who do the food runs, and all the other people as well. We're actually looking for more drivers as well. We want to um, reach more supermarkets, open up more schools, because we know that the cost of living has gone quite uh, up, hasn't it? All right. On and down. But Jesus called them to himself and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it, lord it over them, those who are great exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you. But whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Even Jesus himself, who created heaven and earth and all the galaxies and all the planets, who created you and me, who give, gives us the very breath in our lungs, stepped down from his throne in heaven and came down not to be served, although he had every right to be served, but he came to serve and laid down his life for many. What does that tell us? That he stepped down, that he honored those who were needing help. He honored those who seemed below him, right? And yes, we are. This king, this humble king, would give us the glimpse of what it's like to honor. And what, it's, what does it mean to honor? It's to serve. It's to lay down our lives. You know, um, serving God isn't for the exclusive. It, it isn't for the, the special class. 
You know, God is actually looking for laborers. The Bible says the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he will send out more harvesters in the field. We are always looking for people to serve God and his house and beyond. That there is so many different areas that you can get yourself involved in to serve and honor those that they need a hand up. I, I love how the, the youth are, are firing, firing up under Atta and his leadership and the way that he leads. And he's, he's also not just serving and lifting up the youth, but he's raising up other leaders under him and teaching them. Like, I'm, I'm like working away in, in, in that room. I can hear in the other room, like, wow, this guy's a great leader. He really knows how to draw leadership and the best from his leaders. Honoring down. Now, honoring around. It says this, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor. Everyone say honor. Honor, honor one another above yourselves. Honor all people, First Peter underneath. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. You, you get a sense that God is really into honor. God designed honor. God operates. The kingdom of heaven operates with a culture of honor. It doesn't operate with a culture of dishonor. Back chat, gossip, grumbling. It, the kingdom of heaven operates with honor. The kingdom of heaven looks like this, I would think. Dividing ourselves to one another, honoring others above ourselves. Honor all people, love the brother, fear God, honor the king. What does this mean? How do we honor ourselves? I mean, how, how do we other, honor others around us better than ourselves? It, it's thinking about their needs. You know, humility isn't thinking less of yourself. This is a famous saying. Humility isn't thinking less of yourself. It's thinking less about yourself. It's thinking about others' needs. It's thinking about what other people may need help in. And I remember there's a story about this lady who just struggled mentally. She had all this wealth, all this money, and she, she just struggled to find peace and joy. And her, her counselor said to her, well, why don't you try a, an exercise for a couple of days and see what it's like to actually serve others. See, see what, what people around you need. And it was simple as, as just a bit of time, quality time with her to, to bake some cookies, to chat, to give some cookies. And by the end of that exercise, she felt this peace. It's honoring those around us. What is it like to look like to honor those around you? Well, maybe think about and, and be asking God, if I'm going to leave this out, if I'm going to be sincere in love, if I'm going to hate what is evil and cling to what is good and be devoted to one another in love, honoring others above myself, what does that look like? Well, let's be in prayer. God, who is it that you want me to honor this week? Who is it in my time of prayer that I can honor through encouragement, through maybe a random act of kindness, through perhaps a gift? And as you go about honoring people, guess what? You're living this out, honoring others above yourselves. And you think, really, why? Because as a selfish, um, pe no, I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying in, in general, right? People have their favorite radio station. Have you heard this before? WIIFM. What's in it for me? Right? They love to tune into that radio station. WIIFM. What's in it for me? It's all for the other person, right? But I, can I kindly suggest with, with a pure motive to un, honor others above yourself, to look out for others' needs above yourself, to give gifts, to send an encouragement, to send a prayer, to prophesy, to be there for them. God sees. God sees it all. And, you know, we, we have this opportunity that is so unique. While we get to live on this side of heaven, which averages out 70, 80 or 90 years, that God is watching and then one day when we step into eternity, he will look at, show us everything that we've done, including all the memes that we've liked. Right? Right, James? <laughs> all the memes that we've shared. Right, Zane? <laughs> they will also look at all the honorable things that we've done for each other. All the love that we've shared to our brothers and sisters to, to the helping hand, to, to the money that we gave, to, to the, the food that we, we made and, and shared to others. 
I would think it, it does actually go to somewhere. And I know you're holy, and I know you don't need to hear that, but that's what will happen. That's just reality. God is looking, and He is searching. And who wouldn't want to live like this anyway? To, to bust out selfishness, self-centeredness, and to consider others better than ourselves. It's more freeing, right? It's actually, it's a generous life. The Bible says, the world of the generous opens up and gets larger and larger, and the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. And I think God is wanting us to live with open hands and open hearts because He does want to enlarge the world. He does want to cause you to be a blessing so that you can continue to be a blessing to others. And so how do we do that? Simply by honoring. Simply by looking beyond our own needs and and wondering, God, who can I honor today? It's a joy for us to actually be able to honor others this way, to, to be able to give, to, and we do it quietly, Jess and I. We, we just like to do it on the side. We, we don't, I mean, like, I'll talk about it in general terms, but in, in terms of like the, the blessing it is to see a family or individual just light up, to receive a blessing either through a, a monetary gift, through um, some cinnamon scrolls, in lockdown, uh, you know, we, at one point, our, our elderly neighbor, she, I think she was just having just enough of it. We we're having enough of it. And the Lord said, well, why, why don't you go over? Was it scones? It was scones. It was cinnamon scrolls as a follow-up, but it, it was a scones that got her. Scones got her to Jesus. We baked these, these scones. Well, when I say we, I, my, my wife makes some really good scones. She makes better scones than me. I honor you above your, your scones recipe is an honor above my own scone recipe. <laughs> and we delivered these scones, and how old is she? Eight, 92. She's been 92 for the last four years. I'll tell everyone she's 92. <laughs> and she was just surprised and delighted that we would come with baked scones, fresh jam, fresh cream, and we'd talk about life, talk about lockdowns, talk about Jesus, talk about family. And she's given her heart to the Lord. The simple act of honor can lead to someone to Jesus. And it, what, what did it cost? Five bucks, flour, bicarb soda, Sprite, if, you're a, if you know the scone hack, right? Butter. Put it all together. It, it can turn into someone's eternity being redirected, honoring those around us. And then, amen. Can we go, give God honor for that? Amen. Here's another one. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. I think we covered that off, right? But then here's one for in the body of Christ and the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unrepresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now, you who are the body of Christ, each of you, is a part of it. You know, prior to this, Paul is giving an example to the church in Corinth of what it's like to operate as a body of believers, that the, the, the foot shouldn't say, hey, it's just me, 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 me. It's not all about the foot. Neither is it all about the hand, me, 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 me. If, it, if we're all we're just hands, then how can we see? How can we smell? How can we taste? It's the body of Christ working together. And so when you see a brother or sister perhaps promoted, one of the best ways to eliminate jealousy and striving and and just climbing in your own strength is when you see someone promoted, to, to avoid the trap of jealousy and coveting for what they have, we should do what the Bible says. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Amen. Every part rejoices with it. If you ever felt jealous because someone got a promotion, guess what is the best way to bust out that jealousy? Celebrate them. 
celebrate and honour who they are and what they've done and the achievement that they've been able to get. I, I remember e even in my old work that I, I, I gunned for the, the management position at the Chadston retail store of Medibank and I didn't get it, someone else got it and I thought, oh, I could do such a better job. No, in reality I couldn't. But I, I, I had this deep-seated jealousy and, and I, I thought, wow, where is this coming from? And I knew right away, this is not healthy. So what did I do? I honoured, and I, I had to come to a genuine place of honouring, and, and I, I congratulated this person. I, I CC ca carbon copied in the email the area manager and I said, well done, congratulations, you're so well deserving. And that was genuine. That wasn't like, uh, you know, an Oscar performance. That was a genuine recognition of someone else's worth and value. And the area manager came back to me privately in the background and said, thank you. That was so honouring of you, that was so professional of you, and it didn't take long. After that moment, then God needs to work on my stuff, then that promotion came. Honour opens doors versus dishonour which closes doors. Dishonour that keeps us in a place and a world that is small. Would you honour today? Would you ask the Lord, God, who can I honour? Who are the, my spiritual mothers and fathers that have served so well, that have laid down their life for the gospel that I can honor? How can I honor God? What's a prophetic word I can, I can send? What, what's an act of kindness that I can do? Who, who are my mom, have I been good to my mom and dad? How can I honor my mom and dad that it may go well with me and I can live long on the earth? How can I, can I honor those who maybe are needing a, a hand up, a helping hand? Could I maybe volunteer for the common shelf? Can I maybe volunteer to raise up the next generation at Kids Church? If you don't have a singing talent like me, please don't volunteer for the worship team. <laughs> How can I honour those that are in need? Can I give of my resources, my time? Can I buy some food for the common shelf? You know, the, the name of the common shelf was derived from Acts 2, I think, verse 42. And they were devoted to the apostles' teaching. And they had, and every believer had everything in common. They shared everything. My wife, Pastor Jess, she had this vision. She told me the, the name of the common shelf. And I said, I've just been reading the book of Acts. And it says this, that they had everything in common. Can we be thinking about how can we keep these shelves full so the team aren't looking behind and wondering how are we going to serve these 50-odd people coming in every week? Can we, can we honour those in need? Can we honour those around us and celebrate those who are getting promotions, those who are being recognised and, and lifted up because of their hard work, their faithfulness, their diligence, rather than thinking, ah, that should have been me. Why doesn't anyone recognise me? Can we honour those that maybe aren't as celebrated? The amazing ushering team that they wear, that don the blue. Come on, Alf, Belinda, Chelsea, Bailey, you're on tonight. Those who welcome the family of believers in. You know, we've had a lot of people come through our doors, some notable people in our city, and they said to us, you know, as amazing as the worship is and, and the Word of God, what really got us from the start is your people at the door. The friendliness, the smile, how, how we just feel so welcome and, and there's so much joy and love and peace in this house. So we honour you. Thank you for what you do. Yeah. Can we honour our cafe team? I know you know, I'm praying one day that this night service will be a full-fledging service where we have kids' church and we'll have the cafe going. Keep you caffeinated all night. So you're going to have to stay up and watch Rage. But the cafe team, the amazing things that they do, putting together your hot drinks to a cafe, your coffee. I've been, I said this to my leaders recently, I've been to a church, and they said, revival has hit every part of this church. It has. Revival's come really strong. But then I'll go to the cafe and I have the drink of their coffee and go, revival has not hit every part of this church. I'm sorry, but your, your cafe needs revival right now. Our worship team. Do you know they're the first here? They're here, I think about... At two hours before everyone else, hour and a half, two hours before anyone else. So you think about a 10 o'clock morning service, what time does that mean? Or two and a half hours, 7.30 in the morning that they're here. Can we honour our worship team for being here two and a half hours earlier? And beyond that, they're at home practising. 
Yeah, they might have Saturday Night Fever and, and, and they're, they're practicing their songs, but they're still putting in their effort, their time. And beyond that, they're, they're here two and a half hours standing, and then they serve us in worship for another hour standing. Can we honor them one more time because how much they put out and give out to serve us? Our media team who often just... People look at if there's something going wrong on the screens or the, the speaker's gone crazy and wild, the amazing things that they do. You know, I've, I've served in every part of uh, church life, except for the worship team. I don't have any musical talent at all. If I ever get an inkling, please shut me down and tell me, don't do you dare. But what goes on behind there, there's a lot happening. In fact, if you ever want to get a chance to see what it's like, I promise you, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. You get to really control the service in some ways. And if you, if you don't have a spiteful bone in you, you, you wouldn't dare mute the pastor if you've uh, had a rough week with him. I, I know someone who used to work behind. They're not here anymore. He, he would mute the worship leader because they, they had an a argument during the week. <laughs> it's <been> terrible. <laughs> Someone's like, oh, I know how to get back to Pastor Alex. <laughs> Honoring around us, those the, the lesser seen pass. Lynn Tregenza in Kids Church, you know, we're so grateful, Jess and I, to have endorsed and put into position Lynn Tregenza, who looks after the next generation so well, that these kids are growing up learning these lessons of God. They don't forget, don't underestimate what what your kids are learning at such a young age. We're at a church planning um, intensive this week, and this, this uh, kids' church passed over this mega, mega church, 30,000 people. She, she said, you know what? Why I do what I do? Up until the age of four, we went weekly to a Presbyterian church, and I was told and taught that God loves me. And even when, as a family, we stopped going to church until she went back herself at the age of 15 and gave her heart to Jesus, she never doubted from the age of four to the age of 15 that God loved her. The lessons that she learned at such a young and precious age that kept her from doing some pretty crazy things as a teenager, that God loved her. Can we honor those around us? Amen. So let's just be up on our feet. Yeah. Oh, prayer team. Listen to me. The evangelism team, yes, going out weekly into the streets. You know, uh, Paul, Jenny Bell. Who else leads the team? Just you two at the moment, under the leadership of Pastor Lee, uh, who faithfully go out weekly, and and even um, Linda, who goes out on her own in her own personal time to lead people to Jesus. Some people, who's come to church because you've been told by someone out on the streets about the love of God? Who's who's arrived today because, yeah, there's someone? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Julie, reach out to Pastor Brian and, and defining revival and you know, there's something beautiful when we honor the body. There's so many other teams. Please, shout out. If your team hasn't been shouted out yet, who? Who else? Healing ministry. Healing ministry. Oh, my goodness. Monday. Now, after this shout out, you've got to be ready. You're, you're going to be back. You're going to have a line of people wanting to sign up. We, this team have seen, uh, just, just even last couple of months, just, just so many victories and deliverances where, People have struggled for years and nothing, not, no one can do, can, can set them free. But this team, with a few sessions and deliverance and uh, deliverance counseling, has brought all these things up, taken it out, and now the people are walking free. Amen. Lifelong struggles and battles. There's so much, there's so much. The youth, the young adults, yeah? Pastoral care team. Yes, and, and just general pastoral care, those, Richelli and crew. You know, um, just going, there's house fire leaders as well. Those go over and above in opening the homes as well. There's so much, there's so much that we don't really get to see on a Sunday, right? But we, we want to celebrate you all because you're doing something very special in the body. You're raising up a family, an army of believers ready to take on the works of darkness. And we are, we're seeing victories, friends. We, we, we're winning. All Jesus does is win, 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 win. Amen. The cleaners, thank you. Can you imagine if our dunnies were never scrubbed? That would be a very nasty place to enter. So thank you, our cleaning service team, for all that you do. 
the, the unsung heroes that, that as we go home, there's a small team that hangs back, that vacuums, that resets the chairs, that scrubs the toilets, that mops the floors. This, this, clean, this church is clean because of a small handful of people. We're looking for people in that area too. I didn't intend for this to be a recruitment drive, but it kind of has turned into it a little bit because it, I think it will be remiss of me to talk about honour and not give you any practical ways that you can actually honour. And so with every eyes closed and head bowed right now, Father, we, we just pray right now. Would you, let's just lift our hands to heaven. Would you just highlight the areas where perhaps we've been dishonoring. God, we're not going to call out anyone. We're not going to highlight and spotlight anyone that's been dishonoring. God, there's even areas in my own heart where I know I need to step it up in honoring people, God. In honoring above, down, and around, God. So God, would you just highlight right now who are the ones that we need to honor that maybe we've honored before, but we've forgotten them. And God, you're highlighting them once again. Who is it? Who's God putting in your spirit's mind right now that you know you need to reach out to? Now, God, let's just ask, Heavenly Father, let's just ask him right now. God, let's say it out loud. God, show me how I can honor this person. Give me ideas. Give me words. Give me strategies. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're going to continue flowing in the spirit right now. Um, Tyler Wielden, where are you at? Tyler, why don't you come? Tyler, I felt to bring Tyler with me uh, this morning to Lilydale, and I asked him to come prepared with a word of knowledge. And he had three words. One word in particular was around lymph nodes. And my goodness, six people in, in a room of about this size, maybe just a little bit more, six people. That's, that's high, high odds. We had no idea that there was such a need in the room. And they came and, and we prayed and there was other areas. But I asked Tyler one more time to maybe just, just come prepared in the spirit and give out a word of knowledge as well. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Speak what you want to speak, Lord. Yeah, so there was um, two words that I gave out this morning um, at Lilydale. Um, one of them that Alex mentioned was lymph nodes, but I had two words that um, I, I spoke out and we actually didn't see anyone come up for them. Um, and those two words were, I, I saw a woman who uh, had, um, the Lord said to me that she had pain in her hip for seven years um, and that she's had multiple surgeries but that nothing has worked. Um, so if that's you, come up later. Um, and the other word was that someone is battling anxiety and that they've just started having panic attacks and that they, they, they don't know how to handle these panic attacks, um, but the Lord really wants to not only teach them how to handle them, but equip them as a mighty warrior in the spirit for it as well. Um, yeah, so that's all the words that I had. Um, did you have any words, bro? That's amazing. Um, I think, was there some leaders I got told that you were preparing with the word of knowledge as well? Was that you too, Paul? Yep. And, and Zane, if you had one. Yeah, why don't you come real quick, real quick and share. Uh, carpal tunnel is the word, two words I got. Awesome. Well, uh, if, if that's you, why don't you just start making your way to the front. And before we, we uh, flow into a time of ministry, and if you need prayer for anything at all, but specifically those two areas, but if you need prayer for anything at all, please come see our team with lanyards on. But we never close the service without giving everyone the chance to make themselves right with God. You know, there's nothing that you can do in your own good works that will enter, give you a ticket to enter heaven. The Bible says, in fact, our works of righteousness are like filthy rags in God's sight. We are not saved by works, the Bible says, lest any of us should boast, but we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus, knowing that his work on the cross is what gets us to heaven, that washes away all our sins. And so can I ask you just a very simple, bold and direct question right now. If you died tonight, if you were to step out of this house, there's this church, and God forbid the worst thing happened to you and you find yourself knocking at the, the, 
the, the, and knocking at death's door and, and, and you found, find yourself, you're passing away and you wonder, am I right? Am I going to go to heaven or not? If you're unsure how to answer that question, please don't leave tonight leaving this place unsure. The Bible says it's not God's will that any of us should perish. For God so loved the world, He gave His only Son. If anyone believes in Him, they shall not perish but have everlasting life. Hell was created for Lucifer and his demons. But then it's also created for those who would reject the free gift of salvation. God doesn't send people to hell. He just honors our choice. If you don't receive this free gift, you're basically saying to the Son of God, Jesus himself, well, good on you for doing what you did, but I'm just going to live life my own way, and maybe one day I, I can get into heaven. Don't live like that, friends. Tomorrow is not promised. I went to a funeral just, over, just about 12 months ago to a kid's funeral, 20 years old, passed away from cardiac arrest after his soccer practice. Life, friends, is very short. It can be very fragile. Thank God this young man knew Jesus. And though the family mourned, they mourned so differently to the rest of the world because they know that they will see him again in, in eternity. Is your eternity secure? If you're unsure, well, tonight's your night. With every eyes closed and head bowed right now, please, no one looking around. If you know you need to get right with God and you want to be able to answer that question confidently, if I die tonight, I want to be in heaven with Jesus. If that's you, quick raise of hands. No one looking around. Is there anyone in the room? Is there anyone in the room right now? Yeah, I see that hand. Was there anyone else? Yeah, I see that. Let's just pray. So, Heavenly Father, thank you for your Son, Jesus, for loving us so much that you would give up your only Son to be beaten, to be tortured, to be hung on a cross, and to die for a penalty that should have been mine. God, I ask for your forgiveness. Wash me clean by the blood of the Lamb, your Son, Jesus Christ, and His blood. Jesus, enter my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. I turn from my life of sin, and I turn to you. Make me brand new. In Jesus' name. And everyone said... Amen, amen, amen.